What is up, Cratics? Welcome back to the Criminal Enterprises DLC, where we have our third drip feed car of this update, which is the Imponte Ruiner ZZ8. $1.3 million <laughs> muscle car. Wow. Very, very expensive. Um, but hey, that's the price of the newer DLC cards. It is what it is. Um, so I already went ahead and bought it. Here it is. Very, very 90s for sure. <laughs> Even though it has like a modern interior, which is kind of strange, but we'll get to that later. Um, really cool looking though. So, this car, primarily based on the 4th generation Pontiac Firebird Trans Am WS6. This one had the LS in real life, so a bit more cool than the other ones that didn't really have all that much power. Um, this one was actually a bit cooler. It had that really cool Ram Air hood as well. Um, very distinctive. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a pretty cool looking car. Personally, I'm not too much of a fan of these 90s um, F-body cars like the Camaro and the Trans Am. But they are pretty cool and unique in their own ways, I suppose. Um, they were trying different stuff back then to kind of make cars uh, more sleek and smooth and more curvy. Um, but yeah. And this one also does have the front end, like the, I guess the front bumper, you can say, um, of the Camaro from that era, the 4th gen. Um, so, pretty cool there. But, I mean, the rest of it pretty much is all Trans Am. Um, that's kind of like the only thing they mixed in there um, in its stock form. But, alright, let's go ahead and check out the customization here. the Imponte Ruiner ZZ8 and the name ZZ8 is kind of like a play on words there because uh, for the Camaro they made a Z28 trim package so I guess that's kind of a nice reference there ZZ8 Z28 pretty cool all right we got armor brakes bumpers we have a primary splitter doesn't look too bad there uh, secondary version of that carbon primary bolt-on yeah uh, secondary carbon street splitter I guess I mean these splitters I feel like they have too much of a a modern look for my personal preference and taste but um, this one looks a bit better the vented splitter see this kind of goes with the curvature of the car this one doesn't look too bad secondary carbon and an extended version of that okay that's that's a little overkill there <laughs> Jesus. Okay, carbon bolt on street splitter. Wow. That's uh okay. And that's all the options there. Hmm. Cause so a lot of modern looking splitters. Um I think I'm gonna go with the primary vented splitter. I feel like that kind of suits the arrow of this car. Um, all the other ones are a little too modern looking for my taste, um, and really I think this one suits the car the best, so we'll do that. And it also kind of evens out the side skirt area, because without it, I mean the front bumper is way too high, right? Um, but with it, see like right there, I mean the front bumper, look at the side skirt compared to it, it's just way too high. I think the that splitter definitely helps to kind of even it out a bit, so we'll do that. Rear bumper, it's like a rear diffuser. We got carbon. Um, oh, that's like a vent here. That's pretty cool. That's not bad. The plastic. Then you have the painted version. Carbon GT. No rush at all. Vented GT. That looks pretty good. The vented GT. That's not bad. Then you have the side extension. Yikes. <laughs> Very aftermarket looking. Um, okay. I think. I mean. This doesn't look bad. I'm actually pretty impressed with that. Do they have it with the vent? Yeah, they do. I think I'm going to go with the vented GT diffuser. It actually looks pretty decent. Uh, we'll do that. Engine. Exhaust. So what do we got here? Titanium version of the stock. Okay. And you got carbon. Twin round. Twin round chrome. Carbon. Titanium. Big bore. Oh, and you got like a Corvette style quad exhaust. Let me give it a little gas here so you can see. Yeah. Cool. Not bad. Okay. I don't know how I feel about a Corvette looking exhaust on, on a Trans Am. Um, I think I'm going to go with the. I think the twin round chrome. I think that looks the best on this one, at least to me. 
Also, we'll do that. Hood. So you have secondary stock hood, carbon. Then you have a primary smooth hood. So if you want more of like that catfish Camaro fourth gen look, um, I guess you can go with the smooth hood. However, it still leaves the, the indentations for the scoop in the bumper. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't really make much sense there. They really should have smoothed that out if you chose the smooth hood or given you a bumper option that has that smooth. That looks a bit weird like that. And this looks even weirder. It just it just goes downhill from here, doesn't it? <laughs> Primary vented. Um, vented with a cow induction. Okay. Okay, this looks pretty cool. The stock hood with vents, but I feel that's a bit overkill. There's already a lot going on with this hood, and I feel like adding more vents to it, it just starts to make it look like an eBay special, you know? It's, it's just a bit too much there. Um, oh, yeah, no, why not? Let's add let's add vents to the scoops. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> even, even more. Okay, yeah, definitely not. Um, I think I'm gonna go with the, the stock. I think I'm gonna keep the stock hood. Yeah, let's let's keep that. Uh, lights. So the real car had like pop-up headlights. This one, Rockstar kind of made this new Light weird system where it kind of like has this really thin headlight design at the very edge. Very strange, but anyways. Um, liveries. So you have tribal flame. That's really cool. It's kind of like a reference to the the collector's edition, special edition uh, WS6 Trans Am. Very cool there. Um, and this one also has like the the Firebird there, and like really small, right up, right in, uh, right above the scoops. There you can see it. Very cool. Then you have the Ruiner Firebird. That is sick. It looks really cool there. And it also has the same um, design on the side. Does it have anything on the back? No. Okay. And you have white stripes. Okay. Not bad. Not uh you know, I don't like the way it goes over the uh the roof there. I kinda would have preferred it not to do that. Um then you got black version of that. Then you got white with the design on the side, black, red flames, okay. <laughs> then you got some different racing liveries there. Okay. Um I, I do like the tribal flame. Kind of like a nice reference to the special edition. This one, you know, it looks cool, the Ruiner Bird, but I feel like it's a bit, um... It looks weird with the hood scoop, right? Because it kind of, like, Love goes up and down, and kind of contours it a bit strangely there, I don't know. Um, I... I'm gonna go with the Tribal Flame. I feel like that one kind of suits, um, you know, the hood scoop and the body lines the best, so we'll do that. Uh, mud guards, mm, Not for this car. Uh, plates with a black background, and I don't have a Pontiac or a Trans Am plate. I never really thought they would give us this car, so um, I'll go with my America plate there. Respray. Um, yeah, I mean this car. My personal favorite color for the for this, even the Catfish Camaro and this one is just a nice red. Um, and even without a pearl, I feel like a nice flat red will look best. So I'm just going to throw on here just a classic Torino red, very simple, and no pearl. I do want it to look um, kind of not too uh, like a flashy color, like a nice flat red. And I feel like that looks really good against our livery. Uh, secondary color is the roof bar, and I think that's it. Um, and honestly, I think this looks pretty good in body color, so we'll do that. Let's see here. Yeah, I feel like that flows with the lines of the car better. Obviously, this one looks better because you have kind of like that separated oh, section. But the real car, um, I think the collector's edition had that in black, but then the other ones had it body color. I don't know. I, I prefer body color. All personal preference, right? Uh, but I do think it looks a bit better with the body color. Kreblum goes on the door, offset to the, um, further to the front. That's kind of interesting there. Okay. Roof, roof panels. Primary C-pillar. Plastic C-pillar. Carbon C-pillar. Okay, then. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Roof, open roof. Oh, look at the T-tops. That's sick. So you can remove the T-top the panels there. That's awesome. Then you got primary, secondary, carbon, and then plastic. Wow. Um, I guess, we, should we do open roof experience? 
But I, I do kind of like the glass panels. I feel like that adds to it. And this, I mean, we would just have it open, but at the same rate. Um, eh, you know what? I guess we'll do it. Why not? We'll just do that there. Uh, skirts. You have primary side skirt. Streets. It's like all modern looking side skirts. The chrome trim there. And this one looks pretty simple, but that's way too low, right? Um, oh no, it adds this fin here. What is that? That's weird. Okay. That's all that. Yeah, too 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 modern. Yeah, no, no. We're not we're not putting that on this car. And the side skirt's already low enough, honestly. It, and even with our lower front splitter, it the front the front end is still higher than the side skirt, so yeah, we'll we'll leave it like that. Uh sun strips if you wanna add one. Get some different racing ones there, okay. Spoiler upgrade. So you have the stock spoiler, which, you know, that's kind of like the defining characteristic of this car, other than the hood. Um, and then here you can make it secondary, which you have to apply in order to get the um, attraction benefit. So you have that one, and then you got the commando spoiler on top of a spoiler that's already there. I don't understand that. Then you got a ducktail spoiler, which looks pretty decent, right? Um, if you want that kind of more Camaro look. I mean, I guess you can kind of go with the ducktail and then the smooth hood if you want that look, but it just doesn't look right on this car, at least to me. Um, then you have the secondary plastic GT wing, you know, all the different high performance um, crazy spoilers here if you want one of those. Yeah, yeah, no, we're not doing that. We're doing our secondary <laughs> stock spoiler with the traction benefit. Perfect. Suspension, lowered, and street. Okay, um, yeah, but, I mean, the stock right, on, right height on this thing is just way too high. Um, yeah, we'll do the street yeah, suspension the there. Transmission, trunk, secondary, and carbon. Yeah, well, there's no point in doing this because we already get our traction benefit from the spoiler. I mean, if you want, you know, color contrast back here, I guess. Uh, turbo wheels. Here. So, <laughs> fun fact, the stock wheels on this car are from the Obey iWagon, an electric SUV. I don't understand that decision, <laughs> but I guess Rockstar saw, you know, a chrome 5 spoke. That would work. I, I just... <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay. So for wheels, I'm gonna go to the track category and I'm gonna throw on here the split star. I feel like these suit the car pretty well. Give it a nice modern touch without going a little too overkill. Um, so we'll do this. Let's see how it looks in black. Ooh, with the chrome lip, with our, oh man, with the livery and everything. Wow, that actually looks really, really good. Okay, windows. Ah, hmm, so it tints the, I see, in the back glass. But then our T-tops are still open, obviously. I'll do light smoke, just because I don't want it. Like, this looks weird, right? And then we have the open T-tops, like super dark tints. I think we'll just do a light smoke there. Um, all right, that's all the options. Sick. Our exit to ground. That looks really good. I love the way that turned out. It's got like the exhaust note kind of similar to like the ASP, the Dominator ASP. Interesting. So I do want to discuss the elephant in the room, which is this interior. Yeah. <laughs> This is a 90s car, a 90s General Motors car at that. So, I mean, this super modern looking interior, which is copied from the Adder and the 9F and all that, um, with, you know, sports seats and then this crazy stitching on the dash and a touchscreen radio and <laughs> so, <laughs> this is This doesn't go with this car. I would have preferred them maybe using, like, the Coquette interior. I feel like that would have suited it a lot better. Uh, this interior makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, and I know some people in the comments are probably gonna say, "Oh, well, the touchscreen radio could have been like aftermarket, right? Later, no, come on, man, is this supposed to be stock, right? I mean, <laughs> no. uh, I mean, the gauge cluster, everything is just too. This interior is just too modern in general for it. Uh, but anyways, let's floor it. Really good acceleration off the line. The camera is really weird on this thing. I have to go to the primary one. Yeah, sounds great. Hard on the brakes. Eh, brakes are pretty decent. Sounds really good. Mm. 
It's like really floaty over the bumps. Okay, corner. Okay, so the handling from what I'm feeling, it actually feels pretty similar to the old Ruiner. But a bit more grippy. Wow, not bad. It actually handles pretty nicely. Let's push it a little harder here. Oh, we got a bump up here, so it's not going to be the best turn, but... Drives pretty nice. Not bad. Handbrake boost. Kind of works there, yeah. See the light. The lights look really good. I mean, the lights were like spot on from the real car. Very nice. All right, let's pull over and open all the doors and stuff. Oh my god! Oh, sorry, lady. Man, talk about 90s, right? This car is like the definition of 90s. <laughs> Alright, um... Let's open everything up here. Vehicle doors. Do, uh... Not front left. Let's do all. There we go. Ooh! Got the LS model, engine model in there. I'm glad Rockstar did that. That's good. Um, I believe this engine model, yeah, it should have the... The belts and pulleys and everything should spin there on this one. Let's see? Oh yeah, look at that! Sick. So that's good there. I like that. Interior, we already talked about that. That's a bit of a disappointment in my opinion. Um, trunk opens up. Sick. Good texture quality and everything. Not bad. Not bad at all. I feel like to me the biggest downfall of this car is the interior. Um, it's a bit too modern for a 90s General Motors car. <laughs> it's a bit too nice, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, you could say that it was resto modded or, I don't know, crazily modified or updated, but I mean, not that excessively, right? You know, it's a bit too... <laughs> Anyways, I don't want to drag on too long here. Um, this, this car, awesome. Is it is it worth the price? I don't know. It's 1.3 million dollars. It's not exactly cheap. Plus upgrades. I mean, you're well in over 1.5 million dollars, 1.6 around there into this car. Um, you're in, you know, really nice sports car territory and even lower end supercar territory. Uh, so, if, I mean, if you've always wanted it, I, I guess buy it. Um, but I, I would hold off. Th this car doesn't feel like it's going to be any top muscle car contender or anything like that. Just from driving it around, I can tell you um, it's not going to be beating the Buffalo STX or nothing like that. It doesn't have that straight line speed from what I can tell. Uh, the handling is pretty good, but that's really the, the only benefit I see to it. Um, so if it's not really worth it entirely when it, at first release, Maybe wait for a discount or something if you really want it. That's kind of my take on it there. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.